All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think this is it. This might be our last lesson for grade nine. Um, I hope you've learned a few things. I hope you've been following along at home. It looks like you have. I've tried to make these lessons uh, kind of uh, follow what we'd be doing in class. I've tried not to give you too much, uh, you know, busy work. Hopefully you can see that the work that I have given you has been uh, a manageable amount and it's been amount or and it's been uh, worthwhile work that I'm not just having you do work for the sake of doing it but that these are actually some of the labs that we would be using and especially with the chemistry this is stuff that you'll be using next year so I wanted you to uh, to learn a few things and to see a few things and that's that anyways can't wait to see you guys next year in the hallway that's for sure I hope we're back in September our last lesson here we're gonna have a lab on this actually so this is testing for gases and we know that when uh, two chemicals react that one of the look fors we are looking for are bubbles and those bubbles indicate to us that something new is being created and that something new is a gas but how do we identify what type of gas it is do we smell it sometimes we do inadvertently so when my uh, baking bread is producing new gases and I can see where those gases were because when I cut the piece of bread in half you can see where all the bubbles were all those voids in the bread uh, and I can smell those gases as that the bed is blah, 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 blah. I can't even talk anymore the bread is baking but other times we don't want to stick our nose into a test tube those uh, gases could be deadly so how do we test for them well I'm going to go over uh, how to test for a few common gases and these gases that we're going to look at are hydrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide and water vapor. So water vapor, uh, I can't find a good video for this. Uh, you'll see that next day so uh, I'll just explain it to you right now. We have what's called a, a blue cobalt, cobalt chloride test paper. Basically it looks like a piece of uh, construction paper it's blue and it's paper that's been embedded with cobalt chloride it's a chemical that will react with water vapor and we know a reaction is taking place because it changes color it'll change from blue to pink so in this test here I would boil a kettle there would be a mystery gas coming out of the the mouth of the kettle and if I held the paper over top of it it would in before your eyes it would turn blue to pink in fact if I hold in my hands uh, nice nice and tightly for about 15 20 seconds just the moisture from my skin would leave a, a nice pink uh, color change thumbprint on it and it's kind of neat if you then leave this paper uh, put it to the side and leave it for 10 minutes it'll change back blue as the water has evaporated off of it it'll go back blue again so that's a another uh, color change another chemical reaction the other three tests and we use a, a burning splint a burning splint is just basically a burning uh, popsicle stick and we would do this in in the lab I'd give you Bunsen burners and you tie your hair back and put on your glasses and you would do these so uh, in each of these experiments we mix a couple chemicals together uh, in a test tube and they react and we get a gas and in each of these cases it's a colorless gas we cannot see it but we test to see if it's there and the first is hydrogen gas if you were to take a, a popsicle stick and put it into the the test tube if there's hydrogen gas in there it will make a popping noise kind of like this and that lets you know that it's hydrogen uh, testing for oxygen. Oxygen, as you know, it, or one of the uh, three ingredients to fire, the three necessities of fire are fuel, heat, and oxygen. So the way we test for oxygen is when we're using a burning splint, if the flame gets brighter in the presence of oxygen, if it gets bigger, we know that it's oxygen. Uh, in this case, the, even to be safer, sometimes we just use a glowing splint. So we light the popsicle stick on fire, we blow it out, but it has a nice orange ember end to it. When you stick that in the presence of oxygen, it will either glow brighter or usually burst back into flames. And I think you'll see this in the videos that I'm sending you uh, for the lab. So that lets us know oxygen. And carbon dioxide. 
couple different tests we do here. One is with uh, the burning splint. If you put a burning splint in the presence of carbon dioxide, it should go out. The, the fire will go out. Uh, carbon dioxide will extinguish it. The fire extinguishers in our classroom, those are carbon dioxide based. When you spray it on a fire, they smother the area with carbon dioxide and that fire can no longer uh, survive. It doesn't have oxygen, so it goes out. The other test is a lime water test, and this is one that I would demonstrate to you just because uh, it's easier for me to demonstrate it than for you to all do it. But uh, I take lime water. It looks like water. It's basically uh, just a, a calcium uh, solution. And when I pump carbon dioxide through it, so you can either blow into it through a straw or uh, quite often I will make carbon dioxide gas with baking soda and vinegar. And I trap that gas and I pump it through the lime water. And what happens is it forms a precipitate. It, the lime water goes from looking like water to looking very cloudy. And uh, that te tells us that carbon dioxide is present as well. So those are the tests. And uh, we're going to be doing a lab on this. So you'll, you'll, that is to follow. Have a good day, everyone.